Sign the contract, I gotta do it. All right, welcome to On Set. Uh, I am Daniel Norton, <laughs> here tonight with Cadence in sunny New York City. Seth's over here on the Mighty Mix. <laughs> Seth has uh, volunteered to talk a lot tonight. <laughs> okay, so today we're gonna talk headshots. I know I said last time I was here that we were doing some different thing, but I clearly was mistaken. That's next time. Uh, we're gonna talk about making headshots, simple headshots, good headshots, all kinds of headshots. And <laughs> but not perfect. The best headshots. No not perfect headshots. The absolutely perfect <laughs> headshots. Perfect. I'm working the SEO on the thumbnail there. All right, so yeah, so we're, we're gonna talk about making headshots. Headshots are like the bread and butter, right, of, of photographers. If you wanna get in to make it even just a little, even if you do this part time, you wanna get in to make a little cash, this is one of the easiest things to kinda break into because headshots cover a wide range of things. It could be commercial, actors, models, could be band, you know, people that are in bands and stuff, like actual like rock bands, but also business people, right? Everybody needs a headshot these days. And so many people, they grab their phone, you know, but once they've done that too many times, they say, hey, let's get a photographer. So that could be you. So we're gonna walk through how to do this. I will try to say the gear I'm using as I go, but I will forget as soon as I start. So I'll start just by saying, because people always ask, uh, <laughs> this is a Nikon Z6 II, <laughs> 24 to 120 lens. The tripod is a Manfrotto tripod. All right, here we go. I never remember to, so, okay. So we're gonna build this up with a couple of uh, ideas in mind. So as I said, let's say that Cadence comes to you. A beautiful actress in New York City. <laughs> you would probably very specifically light her a certain way because you're lighting for Cadence, so we'll do that. But let's say you're also hired to photograph 40 different people in an office for the, the business portraits for a website. Now you're gonna wanna light to the most common thing, the thing that's gonna work for, for everybody. So we're gonna go both ways. We're gonna start with something more stylized and then we'll go to a more open as we progress. Just because I feel like doing it that way as opposed to the other. Okay, so, is that for me? <laughs> All right, so, um, no. I'm gonna, oh, I'm using Pro Photo lights here. These are uh, B, this one's a B10. These are B10 pluses, they're sets. He'll make sure he tells you that the whole time. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with, again, because I'm lighting for cadence, I'm gonna think to myself, well, how do we wanna light her? We wanna show off her, the shape of her face. She's young, she's got good skin. We're not too worried about the light being super, super big and open because she can handle a little bit more hard light. So we're gonna start with something that is a little bit smaller. You know, a smaller source is gonna be a harder light, which is this softbox here. This is my favorite softbox. It's a, a Shamira Extra Small uh, Shallow Silver. That's the key right there. So it's got two layers of diffusion in it, but it's also silver. So it has this kind of like quasi punchy, quasi diffused feel and it's smallish, so we're gonna get a nice tight light on her face. That's where we're gonna start. If somebody wanted to, uh, let's say, cover up imperfect skin, or they were, they, let's say, had wrinkles or something, and they wanted to maybe minimize those, this would not be the place you'd start, because the light is relatively small, right? So we're, gonna, but Cadence doesn't have those issues today, so today. we will start. <laughs> <laughs> today. Oh, someone, in the chats, someone in the chat is asking, do you think that headshot photographers can be replaced now or ever by people taking photos with their ever-evolving smartphones? And Cadence is saying no. Okay, so I think that those questions come up whenever new technologies arise. And my answer to that is generally the same. It wasn't always the same because when I was, you know, before I had experienced a lot of it, I had a different uh, answer, which is that most people that will accept that as the shot would not have hired you anyways. So they're not taking anything away. That's just more people getting pictures that aren't, and it's more potential for people to see, hey, I like pictures, but I know this isn't good enough. So I'm gonna look for a photographer. So I think no is the answer to that. I'll, I'll also add to that, a lot of people don't know that they have bad headshots because they just really think they just aren't getting hired regardless. Right. And a lot of the times it's it's the headshot <laughs> sometimes. And Cadence will tell you that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you want to go? Thank you. <laughs> All right, so this is an advanced technique. <laughs> a lot of people don't know this. 
But when you have a softbox like this, you know, people, this, you see the pictures of the softboxes. They all look like this. But you can also do this. <gasps> there you go. That's the horizontal softbox uh, effect. Why am I making it horizontal is the real question. Well, because I want it to fall off quickly. Like, I want to focus on her face. So I want to think about where my light's going, right? I want it to cover her whole face, but not, let's say, her whole body, because I don't care about that. I want the brightest spot on her face. So I'm making that part of the softbox more narrow. That's why I'm doing it that way. That's why I'm not using, like, an octagon or anything like that. I might use an octagon if it was the only light I was going to use, but we're talking headshots here, which could be commercial photography. And as we all know, the more lights you use, the more you get paid. So we do not want to just use one light here. I will probably say the opposite when I do the how to do headshots of one light next month, but don't worry about that. <laughs> Bear with me now. I only, have one light. I, only have, I only have one light, so that's how you do it. All right. That's for the, <coughs> excuse me, that's for the sandbox people. All right. The sandbox people. <laughs> sandbag people, sorry. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty good. So what we want to do with our light generally is we want to put it close. Close will make it softer. Close also because it makes it larger relative to our subject. It also makes the fall off more rapid, so we have more control over our space. So we're going to have Cadence. She look, actually looks really good where she is, framing-wise, with me. So I'm going to move my light a little closer to her. And one thing you can do is, if you're trying to get used to where it should be, is to look through the camera, see the light, and then bring it up till it comes out of frame. If you have somebody with you, even better, because you're going to be like, raise the light, raise the light, raise the light, stop. OK, so now it's out of frame, pointing at her. We want to make sure this is a, a butterfly position. OK, I also don't want the light to be too close, because if it does, it'll zip right past her. So we want the center of the light to kind of come down right at the center of her face. So I'm going to back it up a tiny bit more. Uh, you want a question? OK. A uh, question in the chat is, would you use a different white balance for a group compared to a single person? Would I use a different white balance uh, with a group compared to different people? No, because the white balance is based on the light that is striking them, not on anything else in the shot. You don't use a different white balance because people have different color clothes on or different skin tones or anything like that, if that's what kind of was the implication of that question, I think. Okay, so I'm going <laughs> to, just because I know people will say something, I'm going to leave the top of Cadence's head in, which I don't usually recommend. <laughs> All right, before we start this, I'm going to do this. Whenever we're using flash or any kind of lighting, we always want to know where our light's coming from. That way, if it doesn't look the way we want it to look, we, we kind of can fix it. The only way I'm going to know that is if I know that none of the other light in the space is affecting my shot. You might not be shooting on a large sound stage like this. Pretend like it's, pretend like it's a big space. A large sound stage like this. <laughs> with all these thousands of lights around you. You'd be homeless if I didn't build this stop. <laughs> but I am. <laughs> so, you know, it might be dark where you are, but even still, you can still do the same thing. We want to set our camera at the lowest ISO within its normal range. We want to set our shutter speed at the fastest shutter speed within its normal range. We're not doing a high speed sync or anything like that. And then we're going to dial in our aperture until we get a black frame. You can do it a lot of different ways. If you're using a mirrorless camera or any camera that can use live view, you can kind of look through the back and just kind of dial in until you get what you think is black. Black meaning, you know, completely dark. And generally speaking, we're going to start off at 6.3. And we're going to shoot without the flash. That's the, the goal here. So I'm going to turn off the flash, in theory. And we're going to take a picture. Well, sometimes when you turn things off, they don't go extra. OK, <laughs> we're in capture one here. <laughs> I've, I've learned to, to mostly trust stuff. Okay, we're in Capture One. We can see that the frame is black. Just to be sure, I can come over here to my exposure slider and bring it over until I start to see detail, which is right around there. And we can see that we're just shy of two stops, two stops under. I like to go around two to three stops under, so we're within a working range. But just to be, you know, a little safe, we can go 7.1. And somebody's probably going to say, whoa, but I have this 1.2 lens and, you know, I heard you're supposed to shoot headshots at 1.2. Well, yeah, the person who sold you the lens told you that. <laughs> <laughs> but most people for a commercial headshot want to see their whole face and head in focus. So we're probably not going to shoot that fast anyways. 
there are reasons to have fast lenses and they are wonderful to have, but you don't need to shoot like that. I generally shoot a headshot anywhere from 5.6 to f8. Uh, there's a question asking if you'll be able to do this. The same with LED continuous lights. Could I do the same thing with LED continuous lights? You could, in fact, shoot headshots with LED continuous lights. However, you would have less control of your space because these are LED continuous lights. So unless I have one that's two stops brighter, I'm not gonna be able to do that here. So if you're in a dark space, 100%. In fact, two months ago I did a video. <laughs> All right, so let's do a quick shot with this light. Let's, we're just establishing our, our initial exposure. Okay, that is bright. Am I not in TTL? Are you in TTL? Okay. I was not in TTL. <laughs> we'll just cut that part out and we'll do that again. All right. The magic of video. It's like how David Copperfield does everything. There you go. Okay, there we go. That's a proper exposure. All right, so we can see a few things here that I just want to point out before we start digging into this. Number one, is that slightly out of focus? Maybe. Slightly, okay. Number one, the background has, is lit, right? You might say, well, oh, the background's kind of dark. Is it dark though? I mean, this is what it looks like with no flash, right? So the background is in fact lit with the flash. If you don't care, or it doesn't matter, like the background just needs to be clean or whatever, you can often get away without having to light it separately, which is nice. You put the model, relatively close, you get light on the background, you're good to go. If you don't want light on the background, then you know we can deal with that as well. But I kind of like this nice rich gray. Another thing I'm gonna point out, we started this way just because she seems really far away, doesn't she? Yeah, a little bit. So we're gonna get in a little closer. I think the framing on a headshot, right, if you're gonna do a horizontal headshot, is generally going to wanna be tighter. If you're, if you're putting on a website or something though, you wanna make sure that you leave space all the ways around the body. Okay, that's because you don't want to cut somebody out and have like half their head or whatever gone, right? If you're shooting it for a final print, you can get creative with your composition. So think about how these things are going to be used. So I'm leaving a little bit of space because I'm shooting horizontal because we are doing a live stream video. But normally if I was going to do a frame like this with so much of her body and so much of her head, I would probably shoot vertical. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eventually move in because you know I am. All right. Lens choice. I am right now at 85 millimeters. I think this is a pretty good place to be for a headshot. You're far enough away to get a bit of compression. You're not kind of right on top of them. You're not so far away that you have to yell at them, nor that they get overly compressed and start looking not like themselves. What I've found in the last 10 years or so is that people are tending towards shots that look more like they really look. That might sound weird to even say that, but because people used to use a lot of really long lenses. And people would be like, wow, you look great. But they want to know what you look like, right? And if you're talking about an actor's headshot, they need to look the way they're going to look like on screen. So you don't want to do some 400 millimeter lens and have them look all compressed and like some, you know, hard face. And then they see them in person, just like, oh, it doesn't look like you. Because what's the point of the headshot? You get them in front of the person, they're going to be like, you don't look like that. So we want to make sure the person looks the way they look. If we look at Cadence, if we look at that picture, that looks like Cadence, right? She does not, she's not, doesn't look like her, her nose is bigger or smaller, or her eyes, any, any part of her body looks distorted, she looks good. This is a pretty good range. If you start getting further away and using longer lenses, you will start to have some distortion. If you start getting closer and use shorter lenses, you can start to have some distortion. So somewhere around here is good. Can you just clarify you're only using one light? I am just using one light currently. This is one single light right here, Profoto B10 in a Shamira soft box. It should not have fired, did it? Didn't look like it fired. Oh, uh, how do you test it? What does it test button, the white one? Oh. All right, we'll turn them up, why are they firing? We will fix that problem now. Thank you, people online watching. You are in a different group, you're in a different channel, so they're not firing. You're in channel three, they're in channel seven. Ah, okay. What do you want us to be in three? Yep. Do you want me to change those? Yes. Okay, we're resetting the channels because I'm mixing my lights with sets. This is what we should have done before the demo. Yeah, well, you know. But, you know, we were over here was, hanging out. I was so stressed out. You know? Seth was all stressed about it. The worst marriage I've ever been in. 
Yeah, but we can clearly see only one light affected this shot. Yeah. Whether the other ones did anything or not. Okay, so now, let's try this again. Those lights weren't firing, guys. They, they were, were in a different channel. They were not firing because of the group. Yeah. All right, I'm in auto. They do seem to be firing, though. They're just not firing in sync. No, you're, you're looking at reflections. Okay, really all right. <laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're... There we go. That was just the answer to that question. Now Seth has completely turned them off, and we can see that it's exactly the same. It did... It, that's not true. I, the lights might have been on because in this one her hair was different. I'm uh, kidding. kidding yeah, don't kidding. do that. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so we have a nice clean shot here. Okay, so next thing we're going to talk about is exposure. You know, is my screen just so clean? It's like a glare from him. <laughs> what? No, no, I, I was like, that's sharp, but it's because my screen's so clean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird when you actually clean stuff. Yeah, right? Seth cleaned my screen. It's like getting a brand It took like out. five demos before I could get him to do it. You know how many dirty screens I had to bring in here before I could get set to do? <laughs> Is it going to be that kind of night? Is that what we're going to do? Because yeah. we can do this if you want to do All right. So let's talk exposure for a second before we dig into this. How you expose somebody is going to matter a lot, right? How they want to look, how your style is, whatever. I tend to like to keep people a little bit on the bright or more contrasty side. So somebody who has particularly light skin, like Cadence, is going to look very bright. But, so, but what you do want to do, and there's one reason why I like to shoot tethered, is you want to make sure that you are not you know, blowing out anywhere. So I generally will go where the brightest spots are and just make sure I'm, I don't have any 255s. I don't look like it. And then what that means is I can recover it, right? So it's easy enough to bring it back. If you were nervous, and if you were shooting a lot of people and you had to be fast, you didn't have time to mess with it, you might look at this and think it's a little bit dark. I mean, a little bit bright. And if that's the case, you could dial your light down. I think it looks great. People always ask me about exposure, so just getting there. This is pretty much how, I mean, this is pretty good. I feel like, <laughs> all right, guys, we'll see you next. No. So this is clean, right? And for a model in New York, this might be a fine shot, right? But we want to do something a little more kind of a, a more of a classic headshot. So we're going to build up the light a little bit more. <laughs> well, so you got to get paid, so you got to look like you're doing I got to get paid. No, it doesn't matter. Once the lights are on and set up, you get paid for it. You don't have to actually use them. That's, I should have said that. All right, so number one, I'm going to do the most basic thing you could possibly do. <laughs> because, you know, why not? And that is to use a reflector. You want to it or not? No, I'm just going to do it temporarily. I'm not going to do this. If you're not getting paid much, you got a cheap client, they get cardboard. <laughs> this is a Brooklyn reflector made in Brooklyn. That's foam core, thank you very much. Made, 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 in, made handcrafted <laughs> by Seth. Yeah, I drilled those speed holes. Yep. <laughs> 50. That's that lightweight holes I drilled into it. <laughs> right. We're just going to fill this in. We're going to effectively do a very basic type of clamshell lighting, but we're going to actually do a real clamshell after, which basically means that we've got light from the top and the bottom. We want to make sure that this light is hitting it, so I have my modeling light on so I can see it. And what we want to do is bring it in, now, the smaller your light source and the closer it is to your subject, uh, bring it a little closer up, um, the harder it's going to be to actually get it to do anything. So like a beauty dish with the grid, we've done this a million times, it'll do almost nothing. That's nice and clean. There you go, right? Seth sells these out of a van in the alley if you want one. <laughs> but now, you know, that's, we can just clean it, clean it up. That's what they call just fill, right? Or passive fill, if you will. What we're going to do is set up an active fill light, which, we, which will be effectively called clamshell lighting. Meaning that we're going to have one light on the top, one light on the bottom. Now, one thing about clamshell lighting that I always say, and I'll say again because I always say it, is that generally speaking, you've got two options. Equal lights, which, which, you, which is what you would do if you had, let's say, a big light up here, or a larger light on the bottom. The reason for that is this is a fill light, right? Your fill light should almost always, I won't say always, but should almost always be larger than your key light because you don't want the fill light to cause its own shadows. We want it to be bigger. We want it to be softer and kind of wrap around more. So we're going to use the 2x3 Profoto OCF softbox as our fill light in a clamshell position, which basically means we're going to put it down here. Now, I could use it on this awesome stand, but then I'll have to do all kinds of gymnastics. Instead, I'll use this shorter stand. Mm -hmm. 
so we're just going to bring it right in. Uh, yeah, if you want to. He doesn't want me to bend anything. I'm not using any boards. I'm just putting the line on there. <clears throat> Questions, thoughts, concerns? Um, so why do you use TTL? Why do I use TTL? Yeah. It's convenient, and it works pretty well. Okay? So just for people that maybe are less you know, uh, knowledgeable about it, TTL is through the lens metering. So what that means is it's using your camera's light meter to establish an exposure. Okay? You can think of it as automatic, but remember that my camera is still on manual. So while the flash is automatically giving me the exposure, it is still using the light meter and reading it. It's not like randomly giving you exposure or, you know, from its own system, which means that if you are new to using flash photography, it's a great tool, especially because you're already using your camera's meter when you're out shooting in daylight or natural light, right? This works the same way. You can use a handheld light meter. I found for something that's as imprecise as headshots as far as lighting, uh, I don't worry too much about it. I would use a light meter for something super precise, which like very intricate stuff I use a light meter for, or, or something I have to set up when nobody's there. Let's say for instance, you get hired to shoot those 40 executives and they're like, okay, set up here, the first people will come in an hour and you're by yourself because they were cheap and didn't pay for an assistant. How do you do it? That's when you use a light meter because you want to nail that. You don't want the first person to sit down to be the guinea pig. You want to make sure your exposure is good, right? So either be good with TTL, have an assistant, or use a handheld meter, right? And once you set the exposure, you cut TTL off. That's right. Once you set the exposure, you can turn TTL off, and then you're basically, everything stays the way it is. Just remember to turn it back on if you change stuff because you saw what happens at the beginning when I had the... Okay, so this is, this is a light underneath. This is not where we want to place it, obviously. Seth knows that. Um, and the reason why is because this is just going to go straight up like this. Th th you could do this, but this would make it really hard to control. I found, because I like easy things, the best way to do a clamshell is actually to not to, to kind of mimic your lights. So what we want to do is take this one. Oop, I guess like this. Yeah, that's why I put it back, yeah. There we go. And we want to tilt it at least at the same angle as the, oh, I see what you did there, as the light up top. Which means that in order to not have it like hitting her in the chest, to hit her right spot, we have to figure out where it needs to be. Like you see here, it's even still too close unless she backs up. So we're gonna actually have to move this light back further, which I can do by putting it over here. I probably should have came from the other side. That's big enough that it'll work. It'll work. All right. Yeah. I'm going to move this for a second. I'm going to move this for a second. All right. Okay. So we want this to be more like this. And then what we're going to do, just like that, this light, we're going to bring it up until it's basically in the shot. And then we're going to tip it forward. Like that. That should be pretty good. That's the place to start. Yeah. All right. A uh, question in the chat. Does using a second light for clamshell matter for, is just a matter of control? Is it possible to achieve the same quality with just the reflector? Okay, so the reason why you would want to use a light, or an active fill light, versus a uh, an active fill light, or passive, is because you have more control. With the passive light, the amount of fill I get is based on the distance of the light from the subject and how much of this light can hit it. So, if I want more fill, I gotta move it closer, but what if I want more of her body and I can't get it in the shot? Or what if I can't move it far enough away to reduce the exposure uh, without getting it out of the path of the light. Like, I just don't have as much control. So this gives me way more control, which is why we would do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to kind of just do this light to show you where it's falling. So I'm going to take my A light, which is the top light, and we're turn it off. And this is just the B light, and we're using TTL. So this is also going to be my universal horror demo. Okay. <laughs> 
And we can see how it washes up over her. We get it basically filling in her neck. You, because remember where there was a shadow here, under her nose, in her neck. That's what we want to fill in, right? So we have it on her neck. We have it under her nose. But if we get it overexposed like this, it will just look absolutely terrible, right? So we don't want to do it. We want to finesse our exposure in. And the best way to do that, you good? Oh, if you can use a reflector to bounce light, would you use a flat one or the curved? You could use a curved reflector if you're trying to bounce the light in. Um, they have those uh, eyeliners. eyeliners. It's pretty specific. I, I don't know that, uh, that it would be for everyday use, but they're, they're, they got kind of an interesting thing. I, I would say myself, I don't really do use that. All right, so I'm going to go to B, which is my fill light. And what I want to do is, I'm, and I'm in TTL still, because we're letting TTL do, do the heavy lifting to start with. I'm going to tell myself, well, I want my shadows to be like maybe two stops under. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm just going to dial this down two stops. Now, again, this is a relative two stops. It's going to decide the exposure, and then it's going to reduce it by two stops uh, on the bottom light. So let's see what we get. This is where we hold our breath. OK, not bad. If this was too filled for you, now we switch to manual on the flash. So I come over here, I press this button, and it tells me this bottom flash is on 4.3 power wise. That one's on 6.3. I'm going to take my bottom light. I'm going to turn it down to 3.8. So give myself a little, a little half stop darker. Why? Because that's where I think it'll look good. Again, this is going to come from experience. And now you can see how much more power I have with this. Or not power, but the, the ability to change things. I can control the light. She's really underneath that key though. Yeah. Back up a tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Right. And now, well, that's definitely out of focus. What is going on here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see if that works better. Okay. It feels like my whole exposure's gotten dark, but that's probably because I did a combined light, right? So now I'm like, huh, I'm going to go up to A, and I'm going to dial this up. I'm going to go up two thirds of a stop. And this is now me finessing it in, right? To get it where I want it to be, to get the skin tone we want. Feel, it does feel like she's under it a lot, right? Well, it changed. No, not at all. Not even close. Something is wrong. All right, let's just do a shot with the main light. Okay. Right, I'm just adjusting this light to get the right exposure because for some reason TTL has decided, after I just said, you know, TTL is doing a great job. I'm trying to get myself in the right spot. We're going manual here, guys. All right, here we go. <clears throat> that should be good. So if you've got your light here, like let's say I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, you know what? This is a little bit bright for me, right? And you're not sure and you're just kind of messing with it. What you can do is grab your exposure slider and just bring it over. And what I'm actually looking at, don't look at the background because that's not what, that, that's, that's excess light. We're looking at her skin here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so that's, uh, looks like about half a stop. Make sure you reset uh, your thing changes and I'm gonna come down here. I'm just gonna lower the power of the light, half a stop. It was 8.3, so 7.8 will be half a stop. And that should give us Okay, now let me turn the bottom light back on. And again, we're in manual at this point. Let's see what we get. There we go. All right. Now my exposure is not dark. 
but it's way too filled in, which I don't love because now we've made changes to the light. So I'm gonna jump back over here and I'm just gonna dial in that bottom light to where I want it to be. Maybe come straighter with the. Okay. So if you're trying to find the light, do you go back to TTL? Uh, I'm in manual right now. You could do that. I felt like TTL gave me like a weird exposure. Weird. Something weird is going on here. Feeling a weirdness. <laughs> yeah, I know that. It's not a modeling light. The modeling light is not affecting the shot. That is a good question though. That also makes sense. Yeah. It could be a firmware issue. So what we'll do, so we can't use them together is what you're saying. I think you can, I just wouldn't put a key in the fill. I'd do like a hair or something. Mm, okay. Or I just won't use this for controller. Could be any number of things, but we are using two separate lights with two different firmwares. So everything we do now are, are computers. <laughs> We could do that, or I'm just gonna switch controllers and see if that makes a difference. Could be the controller doing it. I'm switching back to the old fashioned controller. How long did it take to update the pump? Oh, I don't know. All right. Yeah, totally different exposure with the, well, actually there's only one light, but still. Yeah, it's very interesting. Okay. Huh. That's super interesting. Okay, so that, it seems like there's some kind of weird firmware issue, so let's switch out to just use the two lights that match, which are the two, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, okay, just watch yourself. We're gonna swap these two lights out. Now we know. I must update my firmware, which we won't do live for you here. <laughs> A, please, yeah. So this is what happens sometimes, and we just gotta keep going. Basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna swap to two lights that are matching as far as the firmware, and we're gonna go from there. I'll use my light as a, a hair light because it won't be as important to get um, it is as, as exacting. All right, so back to this. Okay, sometimes when you're on photo shoots, things happen and you just gotta adapt to them. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna kind of start over, pretend this isn't here <laughs> um, and we're just gonna go for it. So let me just make sure everything's good. I'm gonna jump back to auto, which is TTL. I'm gonna take my B light, which is in the bottom, and I'm just gonna turn it off. So we're just starting with this uh, key light again, which is in my little uh, Jumeirah softbox. And we're gonna position it appropriately. So again. Brad, you're right, with, you could update with the app, but Dan's, the, the key light Dan was using was the generation before that doesn't have Bluetooth, so we'd have to plug it in to update right. it. So I'm just gonna go with the whole complete matching set right now. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do for now. So we're gonna do this, and we're gonna, should be tilted down a little bit more. It happens, and this happens when you're sharing gear. We go through, all me and Dan go through this yeah. all the time. Yep. All right. Okay. Where was I? All right, so I'm gonna bring this up, and we're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna throw the model light on. Okay. What? My model light's also on. Yeah, well, it's gonna fire too. Yeah. All right, they're both in the A group, yeah. That was a good test then. Yeah. Okay, resetting. Okay. Okay, so remember at the beginning, we were here, it's a smidge bright. We're gonna come in. I'm gonna dial it down a little bit. Again, I'm in TTL. It's probably confused by all the space I'm leaving around her. All right, so I'm getting the key light to where I want it. Again, bright but not overexposed. I think it's still a smidge. I'm using TTL right now. I went back to TTL. All right, that looks good to me. It looks clean. The skin's where I like it. Again, wherever you like it to be. We can, I'm not gonna do the reflector thing again. You remember how that works. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna turn on the B light. And again, I'm gonna set it at two stops under. Let's see if this makes the whole thing goofy again like last time. Ah, there we go. Matching lights work. 
There we go. So now we have a nice even uh, face. I think it's a little bit too filled in though. And I am on the maximum of the TTL range. That is to say minus two is the most you can TTL away. There's ways you can finesse it within body, so I'm not gonna do that. So instead of trying to make it complicated, I'm just gonna switch to manual now. It's telling me this one set at 5.6, this one set at four. Oh, which are both apertures. Interesting. Um, and I'm gonna take the one that set at four and I'm gonna turn it down to two and a half. That would be pretty interesting, actually. And we can start to bring back the shadow the way we want it. Okay, so I think once you combine two lights together, you can start. I feel like my overall exposure is a smidge dark, so I'm just gonna. Clap, give us some affirmation, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I don't need your claps. <laughs> oh, nice. That's right, so I spent the whole week putting a crowd mic up, so you guys have to be enthusiastic. All right, so now we have a nice clean, and, and by the way, I just wanna point out something before we take the next step forward. Cadence has dark hair. He maybe didn't notice that. <laughs> The background is relatively dark, right? Would, would you say that? And look, we can see that she is cut out from it. That's because we've, we're hitting her with good, clean light. Hair is reflective. You don't have to use a lot of light to separate somebody out. You can do the fire starter thing and blast somebody with a lot of light from the back, but you don't have to do that. If you light somebody with the right angle, the hair will reflect the light and they will cut out of the background. But it's important that you have the right exposure because if my exposure was off and I start messing with a lot of things down here, like my, my levels and stuff, I might end up you know, losing something. I won't because I lit it so nicely. But if your lighting wasn't good, you might start losing stuff. But I could actually really crank this down to dark like I did there and I still have separation. But I could just do that. But again, you're not going to pay for that. So we need to use another light. I had another light somewhere. It's in your bag. Ah, huh, here it is. Here's the other light. You know where you are, Dan? You okay? This light says I, I I blocked I blocked out that whole thing that happened. It was it was pretty embarrassing. It, it, it's it's <laughs> th thankfully that nobody will ever remember or see that again. It's not like it's being recorded or anything. All right, all right. So I'm gonna put this in the C group, and I'm gonna go for it, even though it says A on it, which is gonna be tremendously confusing. Okay. All right, it's in C though, right? That's good. Yeah. All right, I wanna turn this model down though, because it's not a touch screen. All right, I'm not gonna worry about it. We're gonna go like this. Can you turn that modeling light off? Yeah, I don't want that. Okay, it's giving my hair a separation light. We're gonna do a little cut her out. Now, I know that you're all about making money here. That's why we come here. And we all know I can't find it. I'm looking for something clearly. Oh, we, thank you. <laughs> we all know that using more lights will get you more money. But the real secret, grid. People love grids. They're gonna start throwing, they'll be like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's grid. No, what the grid is gonna do is it's gonna help us control the spread of the light, right? So oftentimes I'll use a grid when I do a, a hair light because I wanna make sure I'm putting the light exactly where I want it. It also does increase the contrast a little bit, um, but it probably won't be relevant for this particular shot that it does that. This is a Profoto uh, strip box, one foot by three foot, or it's, yeah, one foot by three foot. And again, if we have this on here, it's controlling the spread of light, then we are gonna put the light more kind of aimed at her than, oh, this is totally wrong, okay, hold on. <laughs> It's facing the wrong way, okay. So we're gonna kind of point towards her like this. Again, we can put the modeling light on if we want. There we go. Yeah, something like that's probably good. All right, we're gonna shoot, shoot a great crosser with the hair light. We are in, we're in manual. I can't use the TTL because we're having that weird issue. So what do I do now? I didn't bring my light meter. Does Seth have one? Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't I have a light meter? It says it's got a light meter by popular demand. 
This is a Sekonic uh, LX, no, L308XU. Um, we're going to set the ISO at 100, charge speed at 200, just like the camera. Then we're going to press this button here to get it ready. And we're going to point it at the flash. Two point five. Well, that doesn't sound like enough, does it? What are we shooting at? <laughs> Seven point one. <laughs> All right. So six. So let's see. We got one. That's three point two. Three. All right. This is going to go full power. All right. Full power. Uh, you want a I would like a question. A uh, question in the chat. I have a Westcott highlighter. Works good. Still struggling to fill in neck with it. Any tips? Okay, so what I found with the highlighter, and actually, Westcott's probably not going to like that. Say this one. <laughs> it works better, unless they've changed their mind on it. It works way better with an umbrella than it does with a softbox. Okay. I'm going to reset from that. Oh, you know what it is then? 9.7. Okay. Eye lighter. So for people who don't know, the eye lighter is this like scoop uh, reflector that you put under somebody and they recommend you use a softbox and it bounces up and it gives you like a, a funky thing in the eye light and it fills in. I think it's better with, a, with an umbrella. So if you're not getting enough fill, I would use an umbrella. That's my personal opinion. They did not like that when I did it before. Ah, I'm in mode one now, which makes sense. Okay, well, it should be 99.6, or no, 7. Okay. Is that good? You're on 7. Hit it. All right, I'm going to hit it. Test it, test it. Okay. It's staying at 7. I'm going to say it's the same. Yeah, well, it was at 9.6 when you switched over, because that's the whole problem. Gotcha. Okay. We, we know the problem. It was in the wrong mode. We've got the light. Our exposure here on her hair matches the exposure in the front. So it's very subtle. If you want a more powerful hair light, because this is probably too subtle for us right now because we want it to be a little bit more of a kick, we gotta turn it up. But this will get you where you kind of want to start. I kind of want to. <laughs> yeah, let's give it, let's, let's, oh, I can't turn it up from here. There's that thing with like a dog that has like a bone on the other side of a fence. Can I turn it up from there now? I'm, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing here. Yeah, you're just knocking out the numbers, you know what I mean? Okay, that's fine. I can do it from here though. All right. I don't know if it worked. No, we'll, we'll find out in a second. There wasn't a whole lot for it to do because it was only cut up to 10. Yeah, there we go. All right. This is all we're going to get out of it. All right. Do you want to see some photography math? All right. Every once in a while, you got to do math here. Oh, that's weird. Okay. I don't know why it went down. We are not mixing our lights again. Cranked it. There we go. Sorry, no math. I just was able to fix it that way. I was going to do all kinds of fun math. Um, all right, so we can see here that we now have a bright hair light if you want that. I kind of went extremes. I went the most subtle hair light ever down to a very bright hair light. And you can go anywhere in between. I feel like because she's so lit from, a, from the center, this looks just weird, yeah. right? It does look weird, right? Good, good. I'm glad that you noticed that. Because if you had been like, oh, it looks good, I would have been like, oh, sorry, guys, you failed. You have to think about all of your light. So if I'm lighting somebody with kind of a beauty light, a butterfly light, I don't want to put one hair light on one side of them. It doesn't really make sense. Because I have symmetrical light on their face, I want symmetrical light on the hair light, too, generally speaking, if they're not in an environment. So I am going to go away from the symmetrical light because I think we can create something a little bit different, and then that will allow this hair light to work since we spent all that time setting it up. Question. Does the color of the subject's hair cause you to change the power settings for the hair light? Does the color of the subject's hair cause me to change the power? Not usually. I would say if somebody has very, very light hair or very thin hair, it might, you might need a different exposure, but it's, it's, it's not generally anything. I do hair lights. I feel like hair lights are more of something you do by feel. I mean, not literally, obviously. Um, as opposed to by, by the numbers. You know, you're gonna to wanna to set it up to be equal to the exposure in the front and then just dial it up and down depending on how you like it to look. I, I feel like there's no fixed ratio for that. Well, you can pretty much say, 
oh yeah, your fill light should be a stop and half under, you know, that's kind of standard stuff. But with hair lights, I, I like to say, just do it, whatever looks good. And one of the things people tend to forget is a lot of people's hair is just reflective. Right. So people try to like shove 10 tons of light into the hair as opposed to getting an angle on the hair to make it come Right. Yeah. Yes, if you're not seeing anything from the hair light, it's, it's your angle, not the, not the power. If you're seeing a, an exposure, but it's not enough, then, then it might be the power. So you kind of think of it like that. Okay, so we're gonna go to a more traditional, oh yeah, we're cruising right along, even with all the little speed bumps. We're gonna go to more of a traditional kind of setup. This would be the kind of thing you'd set up like in an office or something where you don't want dangle lights over people's heads and you're not just shooting actors and you wanna shoot something that's a little bit more kind of classic. Okay, so we're gonna to switch to the two by three softbox. I often say that if you're buying one softbox or first softbox, this is a good size to get. It's kind of the classic softbox size to me. Two foot by three foot or whatever many centimeters that is depending on who you're buying it from, I guess. All right, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna place it kind of in front but to one side. This is gonna create depth across the face with shadow, and then it'll be good for our hair light. Now I like, because again, we're going classic here, I find that a, a good classic position for this versus the hair light is to have them on opposite sides. If you're looking for something that feels more natural, as if like it's a large, let's say, natural light source light in the person, then you might wanna put the hair light on the same side. That way it feels like windows are lighting them or something, right? But we're not gonna do that here because I like a classic. I'm also gonna get in a little closer because I really hate being so far away. But you know, I'm doing it for you guys. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take our light and we're gonna place it so that the center of the light is at slightly above her eye line. We're gonna have the light slightly tilted down. This feels the most natural, okay? We're gonna put it close to the camera like this. I mean, if you're using a very long lens, it might not be so close to the camera, but in the view of the camera, and we're gonna rake it across the, her face. So we don't point it right at her like this. We wanna rake it across like this. This is called feathering, right? I made that term up. Nobody's ever said that before. <laughs> Copyright, <laughs> 2023. So we're gonna feather the light across. This is a couple of things for us. It allows us to kind of use this part of the light. If you can think of it as more of the light sees her face. So this part of the light comes all the ways over and wraps around, wraps around. And you won't be as shadowy on that side. Makes it a nice, nicer light. It also gives you more to bounce back if you want to use a fill card. All right, so we're gonna start with the feathered light. I'm not changing all the numbers, so I'm just gonna make B my key light here. So I got B, it's in auto. I'm gonna take A and turn it off. I'm gonna turn C off as well, which is the hair light. I'm just resetting this because it's in two minus two. We want it to be zero. And we're gonna start here. Okay, so this is gonna give us that, you know, more classic portrait light, right? We've got, it's a little bright still. We've got some shadow here, We've got shadow on our nose. Definitely a little bright. I'll back up a little bit, all right. I said I'd leave the top of your head in for the whole thing, so I will do it, I swear. All right, um, all right, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna dial it down, have a stop. Again, I'm in TTL, so when I say dial it down, I mean relative to the TTL exposure. We get the exposure we like. That looks pretty good to me. It's clean, it's bright, but it's not past the point of, uh, you know, no return. And just to give you, a, you know, an idea, I guess here was our first, All right? So you see the difference. The one on the left is a little bit more kind of stylized. The one on the right's a little bit more classic because the way your shadows and light are falling, right? Now I could, because this is already pretty filled in uh, because I have a big light source, I could just turn on my hair light and possibly be done with this. Because remember, I've already used the other light, so I will get paid for it. She hasn't really moved, so in theory, the power should be fine. I am going to put it in manual, of course, so it doesn't change. And let's just see what we get. Okay. 
Okay, it's a little hot for me, but you can see the angle of the light now makes more sense, right? Whereas before it looked weird, here it actually makes sense because of the contrasting light. I'm gonna take that light, my C light, I'm gonna turn it down, half a stop, feels about right. I'm gonna go like that. You know, and we can create whatever kind of balance we want. Oh, is my laptop uh, dying? All right, I'm gonna plug my laptop in. You guys got any questions while Dan gets me his power adapter for his laptop that he forgot because he's, he's batting a thousand right now? <laughs> he's batting a thousand. <laughs> Did you show up today? Are you here? <laughs> this is what, this is what I get for, for making fun of Seth all day. He's got me now, all right. <laughs> All right, nice and simple questions, thoughts, concerns? Yes. Yeah, oh, could I use an octagon? You know I could. Yeah, so the octaboxes are great because they, the shape of them give you a lot more of this, right? So you get more like kind of reach over with the octagon. So I, I, if I'm only using one light, it's often the one I'll use. I do like a good octa. I'm using a box because it's more classic for this, but you definitely could use an octagon for this. I would not use an octagon for this. And I wouldn't use it for the fill underneath of the clamshell necessarily because I think it would take up too much space. But you could have used it as the key light. So in any of those places, an octagon would have been fine. Well, no, aside of that being in front of the camera, if you flip it, it would give it a lot more wrap too, right? Oh, look at you. Horizontal. That didn't feel like a question. <laughs> wow. No, I, I, so, so this, this gentleman you know, learned the special professional technique earlier. And yeah, 100%. You know, this is great because this gives you even more. Now, if we do this, doesn't look much different because we don't need a lot of fill. But if we needed that fill over here, it would make a big difference, right? The reason why it doesn't make a huge difference here is because this box is so big and so close relative to her. So it's not gonna make as big a difference, but you definitely 100% can do this. And this is a good idea if you're gonna, let's say, shoot two people, right? Or, hmm, can I do a screw everything up? I think I can. Or I could do something like this, right? And this is gonna create more contrast. Right? You got a, yeah, go ahead, question. You got a few of them. Uh, one, funny. would you uh, put a grid on that key light? <laughs> would you do that? Would I put a grid on the key light? I would if I had one, yes. Okay, and then there's, is there a preferred side to left or right, or is it case by case? Okay, so is there a preferred side? That is a good question, and yes is the answer. <laughs> what it comes down to is, if you have enough time, you know, with the person to do it. What I generally do with a new person when I first shoot them is I spend a few minutes lighting them from various sides and then I make it, and I even tell them that. I'm like, I'm gonna figure this out. But if I have 10 minutes in an office, I put it to my right. Why do I put it to my right? Because that's where I always put it. <laughs> it's just the place I put it. I think it's classic to have it on that side. Um, but yeah, it does make a difference. And the reason why it makes a difference is people's faces generally are not symmetrical. So, you know, I mean, yeah. definitely makes a difference. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, there's, a, there's certain philosophies that you can take a symmetrical shot, look at the broader side if there's a, because you're not symmetrical, and put the shadow to the broader side so it matches more equal to a narrower side of a face. Oh, yeah. And that's one philosophy, but everybody has the different styles, right? So Yeah, I don't, yeah. Because that might be true, but not the, the, the most important thing with these is that the person likes it. So I guess that's part I left out. Exactly. What I would normally do is I would go, hold on a second, bang, bang, put the light over here, bang, bang, Okay, which side of your face do you like better? You just ask them, right? You don't, you don't need to, I mean, not like you don't know what you're doing, like, I don't know what to do, but, but you know, like, hey, we can do it either way. They've been staring at their face their whole life. Yeah, people have an opinion about how they look, and especially now, because people do make a lot of photos of themselves or see a lot more photos of themselves than they used to. So, so yes, a grid is useful if you want more contrast, so that's great, so I might use it. Although I wouldn't if I was shooting like a lot of people. 
And again, this is a setup I would use if I had a lot of people coming and going because it's real easy, right? It's like, this is gonna look pretty good on anybody. It's not gonna be the best shot for, for like everybody, but it will work. So again, you wanna go with kind of, the, I don't wanna say lowest common denominator because it doesn't sound very good, but you know, you wanna make sure, like I wouldn't normally use such a large light for Caden, she doesn't need it, but I would probably won't need a big light, you know, so. Okay, let's do one more like this. While he's doing that, there's about 400 people in this chat and only yeah. 166 likes. Dan um, needs affirmation. Hit like. Help the guy need out. Affirmation. Questions? Help him. Thoughts? Concerns? Oh, you know what I didn't do? Well, I did do it. I just, uh, I want to use this light as the key so you can see how bigger and softer it is. Uh, but again, it's funny because people will look at that and go, well, that's not softer. You have a shadow. Remember, soft hard has to do a transition, not how much shadow. You can have a lot of shadow in a soft light. Okay. So we have time for one. Soft transition as opposed to sharp transition. That's right. Sharp transition for a hard light. That's exactly right. All right. I feel like we should do one more thing. What should we do? What's that? That would be the one I would choose. Yeah, this would be the one. So uh, let's talk composition for a second. So people always ask. <laughs> Let me find where I'm actually showing your whole head. You know why <laughs> I crop in. And you, you might think that like this generally looks better. But the thing about getting a whole somebody, it comes down to how you're going to present your shot. I came from a time of, showing my age, film, where you would get the, the negative and they'd see it. They'd see a contact sheet or a slide and they'd see that finished crop. So you want to compose an image in the camera or on the thing that is the best for them to look the, their best, right? So I wouldn't leave a lot of space around somebody because to me that feels like a lot of wasted space for no reason because nobody, no matter what they told you in that book in 1975, thinks the person's missing the top of their head if it's not in the shot. I mean, we know they have a top of a head, right? If they were wearing a crown up there, I mean, you want to show the crown, right? But nobody cares about the top of Caden's head. So this is a more appropriate composition. <laughs> However, if you're, if you're shooting it for a website or something and you need to get space around them, do it. You know, it won't hurt. You can always crop it later. I'm going to give you, so this question is for me. I'm going to give it to you. Uh -oh. How do you make someone with a large, quote unquote, large face Slim them down a bit. How would you do it? Oh, my God. Really going to make me do that? All right, so two things about this. Number one, I will tell you how to do it, but first I'm going to lecture you. All right, number one, if you have somebody who has a large face in front of you, the worst thing you can do is try to make their large face not look the way it looks. Our job is to make people look the way they look and feel good about it. Right. Create a picture of somebody that they really like but looks like them. I'm not going to go in and change your face. I'm going to help you understand what is great about you. What is, maybe you have a large face, but you have amazing eyes or a great jaw or a cool mustache. That's what we're going to focus on. And we're going to make an awesome shot of that. I'm not going to try to make you different. But if you want to make somebody's face look a little more narrow, a longer lens will do that generally. Yeah. A longer lens and shadow. And shadow, yeah. You can do it with shadow, but then you might just end up with big shadows and their faces still But wet. the problem with that is they're going to come back and go, I didn't get that part <laughs> where no one recognized me in this headshot. And then they're going to go, oh, I should have listened to you the first time. Right. Yeah. You, you really don't want to do that if you can avoid it. I mean, it's fine, it, you know, just because people love to see themselves look different. But if the idea is I don't like myself and I'm getting this picture, I think trying to help people like themselves more in the way they look is a much better way to progress than to change them. It's also part of this. Yeah, it's, it's part of the portrait. The portrait is, and the headshot's a portrait, is connecting with somebody and getting them to feel good. The best feeling is when somebody walks in and goes, I hate having my picture taken, I never get a great picture, and then they leave going, oh, I really like that one. And that's what we want to achieve. Not, oh, I look so different, but good, I got a shot. It's, oh, I never thought I looked good, but you, you know, helped me see that. So. That, that, that would be my goal there versus trying to change people with light or Photoshop. Yeah, I think it's important to remember that portrait means portray, right? Portray oh, yeah. that person. Look at that. All right. So. That's a shirt for you. Well, I mean, how many times have we done headshots of someone because they wanted a certain look and mm -hmm. it, didn't, it may have been a great shot, but didn't work. It didn't work. For that you, is true. You yeah. know? So the best headshot photographers in the world make people look how they look and feel great about it. Oh, interesting. So uh, reverse the image because that's how they see themselves in the mirror. I also uh, uh, have heard that before. That's very interesting. Just don't have any text in it, obviously. Okay. Should we do one more quick picture? Sure. Should we do a profile? Because I, I always do a profile. It's a, oh, you know what I didn't do? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, 
of cadence look this way. This has nothing to do with anything. Excuse me for a second. Because <laughs> yeah, you haven't been derailed this whole <laughs> no, I haven't. demo day. Uh, <laughs> All right. I, I just want to do something for a second here. All right, what are you going to see what this looks like? So up this way. Might be tricky here with the grid on it, but we'll see what we get. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, a little hot. Uh, the refrigerator door at midnight look. Yes. <laughs> 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 what do I want? The grid's making it a little tough to get the light where I want it, so I'm just going to move it around. So this is a, a what, short lighting. This is what, this is what I do. Every time. Seth says I always do it, so I have to do it. The same way that he does a uh, what, what? a pop and blur. I don't always do it. He always does a pop and blur. You, you'll see. Come to Seth's next demo. I do. First of all. <laughs> well, he doesn't call it that, though. Oh my He's cooler. God. He calls it shutter drag. Uh, yeah. All right. Good. Can you use my lights in more questions. <laughs> I'm done. That's the end of me. Any questions? I'll be back in two, or is it next week? Next week. Do you want to know when I'm back? I think it's next week. 21st. 21st, that's next week. That will be small kid. <laughs> is it right? Small, small kid, big results. So all you small light fans that want to just get right. small light gear and get things going, that's, that's the one for that's you. That's that one. We're gonna, I'm going to pack all my stuff into one little backpack, and we're going to take it out of the backpack, and we're going to shoot with it. So we're going to create some fun shots. Um, hopefully, this Dan, was helpful to people. Dan's going to throw his back out before he throw starts. my back out with all kinds of weight. Um, <laughs> because a lot of times, you know, I mean, I joke about the more lights you use, the more you get paid, which is true. But, you know, sometimes we've only got a little bit of gear. And the idea of being able to work with what you got is something that's really good to work with. Even when you have a whole studio full of gear, it's cool sometimes just bust out two pieces and say, what can I make with this today? And that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to play. So come back in, well, probably before then, though. Is there anything before then? What about Coffee with Creators? Uh, yeah. if, you, if you're around on Wednesday in New York or if you're watching online, Seth interviews different creator, creators. Oh, okay, he's pointing at a thing. Just know scan this QR code <laughs> and you will find out all the events. And also add the new channel, uh, youtube.com slash Adorama events for everything. Yeah, there's another cool channel. Seth does Coffee with Creators. You got to bring your own coffee at this point, but we're working <laughs> on it. Uh, he interviews different people. Do you know who you're doing this week? Uh, Susan. Uh, we're doing Susan Mangano, who does Shutter Drag. <laughs> oh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but check out Joan. Drop the mic. I'm off the stage. <laughs> but check out Joan. Uh, we just had a nice conversation with Joe McNally this week. And you check him out. There's 11 episodes so far. So you got a whole playlist on this channel. Okay. Go check him out. Dan was episode two. He was a hard get, but I got him. Yep. <laughs> it's hard to make me talk. All right. Any any questions from the crowd before we close out? Crowd. We got a microphone, which we haven't used yet. Uh, yeah. So you actually charge more when you bring more lights. Does that work? <laughs> or is that a joke? I don't know. Do I actually charge more when I bring more lights? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank kind you. of. So it is a joke. I'm, I'm kidding, of course. But, but not, it, it, not really. It, it comes down to this idea of perception, right? When I was when I was coming up, I used to work uh, as a photo assistant for this guy. I did lots of big advertising stuff. We did pharmaceutical, which is like the big money. And we would come out with trucks full of gear and set it up on the beach and all this lights and everything. 90% of what we shot, the sun. But he couldn't show up with one long lens and a camera and get paid the big money. Yeah. So you do have to look the, the look if you want to get professional work. But also, you know, you don't want to just do a half job either. So having more equipment, having the right equipment does help you. So I joke, but you can definitely do a lot of stuff with, with one light or whatever. You don't but, and you do charge, you know, when, for rental. I do anyways. So there is that. But that's not where the real money comes from. It comes from the admiration of the fans. <laughs> Seth knows. <laughs> All right, that's it? YouTube yeah, that's it. Oh. All right. Oh, one more we got one question. More. Oh, another question. Oh. question. Um, so how much of this, uh, these are great shots, by the way, but how many, like, do you think any of these need, like, any retouching or editing? No. Or would oh. you? Do I think any of these need retouching or? No. no. She's right here, man. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's why I asked her. I, I, no, I don't think so. I, I generally would prefer photos that are not retouched because then they actually look like you. That's correct. Yeah. You really don't want to retouch if you could avoid it. 
So uh, for a headshot, for an actor, because they should look the way they look, you know. And most times, if you are retouching, it's the things that are temporary right. that aren't always on their face, like blemishes or something. But I tend to leave scars and stuff like that because yeah, they're yeah. going to want to know who they're hiring for those parts. That's right. It depends on the use. But uh, these particular shots, I don't think no matter who they were for, would I edit them because I think they're pretty clean. But, you know, not that I never do anything to. Turns on the shot. All right. Good question. Okay, we're good. We're going to cut out. Let's call. Uh, yeah, that's it. We're going overtime here. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, thanks yeah. so much. Just putting in the can claps now.